It's hard to describe the feeling when I see an Asian American actor in a Hollywood movie. Ooh, an Asian! It's always a surprising affair. I imagine it feels something like this. Good to see another brother around here. <sighs> yes. It's honestly easier for me to remember instances of Chinese actors or Japanese actors in Hollywood films. All of them are famous in their own countries before appearing in Hollywood films. But Asian American actors, whenever they appear, it almost always catches me by surprise. Deep Wang. Deep Wang. <laughs> Some of you out there must be really confused. Why is such a big deal? Seeing an Asian actor? So for this episode, I want to talk about the topic of Asian Americans in Hollywood and share my past experience and perspective as both a film goer and a filmmaker. Let's talk. Ever since I got my way into the film circle, I noticed the homogeneity. In our film school, there were 60 students in our year. That means, with the demographic of Montreal, we should expect 19 self-identified racial minorities. Instead, we have 10. The film set experiences are largely the same. Nearly everyone is white, and most people are men. This homogeneity extends to in front of the camera, too. My graduation short film calls for one Asian character. My assistant director searched high and low for emerging Asian actors. While other characters get around 15 applications each, the Asian character got free. For various social, financial, and cultural reasons, Ethnic minorities are simply less likely to be in film schools, much less working in the industry with any regularity. I think now you understand why I'm always surprised to see Asians in movies. On the big screen, my expectation is just as low. Growing up with Hollywood action films from the 80s and 90s, I noticed one thing. Asian characters are rare. If a character doesn't have to be Asian, it often is not. And if a character is Asian, they must exhibit some stereotypical Asian quality, such as Japanese stoicism, or Mongolian brutality, or Chinese Kung Fu. At least, that was my understanding of the situation. Little did I know that sometimes, even if a character has to be Asian, the actor doesn't have to. We all know the most egregious examples. John Wayne as Genghis Khan, Christopher Lee as Fu Manchu, Mickey Rooney as the f***ing Antichrist. But these films would perform my time. No, I realized that when I watched Street Fighter The Legend of Chun Li. Chun Li is one of the most famous Chinese lady in game and history. She goes by no other name than her Chinese name. Even her in-game costume is a modified Chinese Cheng Zhang. Her Chinese heritage is as much a defining feature as her Kung Fu kicks. So you can understand my disappointment when some executives took a look at Kristen Kurt and said, Yeah, she looks Asian enough to me. The weird part is, the film shows Chun Li as a child and she looked Chinese. But then she grew up and BAM, she's half Chinese, half Dutch. What the hell happened? I don't want to belittle Kristen Kirk's talent, so let me be clear. I have nothing against white actors and actresses, but this is not a suitable role for her. It's bad casting. It sends out a message. When we have an Asian lead, we have half of an Asian lead. Oh, that same year also saw the release of the King of Fighters movie, where the lead character, Kyoku Sanagi, is played by Sean Farris. Kyo is a half breed. Yeah, half white, half Caucasian. Fuck you. It's nearly impossible to talk about this topic without discussing the controversy surrounding Ghost in the Shell. If you don't know, Ghost in the Shell was a sci-fi anime film 
about a woman with a synthetic body, who, in the process of uncovering a conspiracy, faces questions of her identity, whether or not she is alive. The controversy is about the casting in the 2017 live-action version. Lead character Kusanagi Motoko was played by white actress Scarlett Johansson. Now, I understand the concept of adaptations, changing the characters and locations, localizing the film so that American audience can watch the film without the need to be a foreign cultural expert. Take Ringu and the Ring for example. The lead character, who's a single mother, acts very stoic and subdued in the Japanese film. She's the guardian of her son. In the American version, now set in the U.S., the mother is confrontational, but also acts like a friend to her son. The cultural differences meant these characters must act differently. But Ghost in the Shell didn't do that. The visual, the settings, they remain the same. Eastern, foreign, almost faithful to the source. The characters also act largely the same. There is no adaptation and localization, so the decision of changing half the population's ethnicity has little motivation, justification, nor any meaningful impact. Other than everyone speaks English. How do you know what's a glitch and what's me? Despite everything else, is written in Chinese and Japanese. The decision even goes against the intent of the original film. Kusanagi is now Killian, a change that seems to justify the casting choice. Yet this change is even more superficial, as the ending reveals that Killian was a Japanese girl. She just happens to have a synthetic body of a white woman. Her true name. Kusanagi Motoko, the same Japanese woman from the anime film. This is how it felt. Where? Where's the Mandarin? Where is it? Whoa, whoa, whoa! He's like a slap in the face. Yes, since the body is synthetic, she can be white. But whether or not she can be white is irrelevant, because to the industry, the fact that she doesn't have to be Asian means that she will not be Asian. It's not all doom and gloom, though. In recent years, the North American film industry has been much kinder to minority actors. Chief among them is the Star Wars series, with a diverse cast, which managed to make foreign accents sound cool. Of course, there is nothing new to the Trekkies. The new Star Trek series continues to embrace ethnic diversity and inclusivity. Searching, starring John Cho, is a critical darling. And a box office success, and of course the mega hit that is Crazy Rich Asians, proving that films with Asians aren't always box office flops. Hopefully, it's a good sign for things to come.